tried pushing her your way, and look what happened. This place is an experiment. This school opened in 1921. Yeah, all right, then. It's a big experiment with my daughter. Our daughter. Our daughter, who had a bit of a breakdown. Shh. So here you. She, knows she was ill, Rose. So she knows she failed to get into the school of your dreams. Oh, that's right. Blame me. It's not about blame. It's about doing what's best for Maddie. One term and we review. I'm looking at this as rehab. Try childhood. You don't give me a boarding school. Two minutes from our house. I'm not jumping you. I'm paying. What with? Spanners? That's why I'm not getting out. You haven't got the money, have you? I'll get it. I'm working on a plan. It'll all be sorted when I pick you up at the end of term. End of term? Aren't you going to come and see me? The school don't like parents bugging kids during term time. Honestly, it's what they said. The kids are long-haired weirdos. Hello? I'm not going to fit in here, Dad. Why have I got to come to this school? Because I don't know what else to do with your son. You want Maddie to turn out like her? I want Maddie to turn out like Maddie. I'm doing my best for you, Ryan. Don't go getting chucked out again. Third time lucky, eh? Teacher Maddie. Not him, her. You can say your goodbyes now if you want. I'll look after her. No. Yes. Mum? This is for you, darling. A modem. Thanks, Mum. Right, keep it switched on. I've got the charger in your case. There's some money. Hmm? It's for emergencies only. It's a list of things to do. 
Hug someone. Now work hard, yeah? Keep on top of your lessons. And if you don't like it here, then you can come home. It'll be fine, lads, okay? Don't worry about anything. Just have fun, okay? But, Dad... Love you. Huh? Love you too, Dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Matt. We call him Yoga Matt. <laughs> He's your house parent and responsible adult. The locker is for your valuables, and Matt can look after your key if you want. He's your house parent. Given up parents, and I don't need no body thanks, all the same. Ned. Everyone can climb that tree. Just not the big beach, because basically it's enormous. I brought in a rule about not climbing it when it's raining. What are you on about? The school rules. We make them. And sometimes we break them. Kids make up the rules. We meet here twice a week. Talk about stuff. Propose new rules. Everybody votes. And if enough people agree, the rule is made law. So what? We had a school council at my last school. The SWATs yapped away, but still the teachers did everything their way. It's not like that here. The teachers are just part of the community. Same as us. It's one person, one vote, it's going Hey, hey, get out. No skateboards allowed indoors. It wrecks the floors for everyone else. Sorry. A kid made up that rule? Yeah. Carmen. She's got splinters. OK, then. I'm gonna say I don't have to go to lessons. Someone already did. The man who started Summer Hill. He thought the kids should only go to lessons if they wanted to. So I don't have to go to lessons? You don't have to do anything you don't want to. That's the whole point of Summer Hill. Drama studio. Hi, I'm Heather. Come up, we're playing parrots. I'm being Tiger Lily. Climbing trees is dangerous. He says. Hi, Mum. Yes, I'm fine. Yes, the phone's working great. Ahoy there! Enemy sighted at three o'clock. Heather, we've played it already. Let's do one with on the rock. No, it's the real enemy. Hope's coming on board. Peter! Mm -hmm. Ow! Yeah, take the hook! Not him! Them! It's an invasion! There's hundreds of them! Office for Standards and Education. Ofsted. Please remember, you are not educational philosophers, but school inspectors. Even if Summerhill might not feel like a school, it is registered as one, and as such, has to meet certain minimum standards. The key to a successful inspection will be to remain absolutely focused on the big question. And that is? Are the children getting an adequate education? And if not, why not? Precisely, Myrtle. Precisely. So, you know the drill. Quantifiable attainments, value-added improvements, precise targets. Bullseye! 
That's so out of order. I'm going to bring you up for that, Peter. This isn't right, Len. I'm afraid it is. Ofsted wrote to say they were coming for a three-day inspection. No, I didn't mean that. They've been in virtually every year for the past nine years, but they've never sent in eight inspectors before. Len, I think this is a hit squad. Somebody somewhere's got bored with waiting for us to do things the government's way. What are you doing, Zoe? Not going quietly. Roger Wharton. Sorry, Redhead, but call me Zoe. Everyone else does. Mrs. Redhead, we will need the attendance role for lessons. We haven't got one. So the pupils are still allowed to choose whether or not they go to lessons. Oh, yes, absolutely. Children don't have to go to a single lesson the whole time they're at Summerhill. Does she mean that? You bet. All lessons remain optional. All lessons remain optional. We'd like to observe lessons as soon as possible. Sorry we haven't got any today, but you're welcome to observe sign-up. you whether you actually turn up or not but if and when you do come along you come along to learn and participate fully it's not fair on the other guys if you come in here and mess about if you want to do that there's plenty of room out there now Leonard's top tip for the new guys playing is the most important thing you will do here at Summer Hill make time for it Right, I need your sheets back by this afternoon, please. And when I've drunk a couple of buckets of coffee and wrapped a wet towel around my head, then I will write out your personal timetables. I'm only doing English and woodwork, of course. Of course, you build in your boat. Thank you, Peter. What about you, Ryan? It's Ryan. What about a bit of astronomy, Ryan? You know, stars at night, get to join up the dots? No. What about a language? Plenty of opportunity for conversation? No. We do a nice line of magic tricks, bike mechanics, cricket? No, no, no. I don't want to sign up to any lessons. Why smell? <laughs> Ryan? Didn't you just say you weren't interested? I'm not. Okay. Bye for now then. See you later. Sorry that took so long. I do hope I sound better in translation. Now, has anybody got any questions? Maddie. How much are we allowed to sign up for? Well, as much as you like, really. As many as you think you'll be happy with. Yeah, as many as you like. go to any lessons the first year I was here. Oh, I couldn't do that. I've got to keep on top of things. Hi, Mum. Oh, yes, I'm just signing up for lessons. All my subjects are here. They even do Japanese. Yes, OK, I will. English, maths, science, geography. Will you come back to lessons? Probably. Probably. I see. You have an approximate time scale for probably. 
couple of weeks in most cases. Sometimes it's months before the boredom and curiosity factors set in. Could be years. Years? Children don't have years. Exactly why A.S. Neil thought childhood was so precious. Excuse me. The late Mr. Neil's philosophies are all very interesting, I'm sure. But what about the day-to-day -day practicalities? What strategies have you put in place to support children like him? We don't use strategies as such. I do hope you'll experience some of the summer hell magic while you're here. I'm sorry, but I can't see magic here on my tick list. <laughs> no. I cried a lot when I first came here. You'll get into it. It's brilliant fun. I don't think so. Does she ever let you alone? This will cheer you up. What will? Lights out in half an hour. Yes, Stella. Do you want to go downtown for fish and chips tomorrow? I'm broke. Lights out soon. Anyone for kisses and cuddles? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got sweets. Yeah, and I've got some crisps. Well, what's it all for? Me and Peter, planning a sneak out, a midnight feast. Shh, don't let them in. Why? They're Betty's officers. They make sure we go to bed. <laughs> hey, I know, we could all hide under my invisibility cloak. I don't want to get into trouble. We won't. Only if we get caught. <laughs> I'm not coming. Suit yourself. Where'd you get this from? My mum. She's a lawyer. Mine works abroad. What do you reckon's this place, then? Some of the kids are a bit weird. <laughs> Check Peter out. Invisibility clue. How old is he? Six. And as a fiver. Uh, I've only got a £20 note, and it's for emergencies only. Like what? <laughs> Don't worry.
Maddie. How was your first night? Come on. Still up for time. I thought you were skin. Yeah, well, forgot I had this. Welcome to a school meeting. Meeting come to order. Everyone, sit down and shut up. Shh. <gasps> We're here to inspect the school. Quiet, please. Um, I want to bring up Peter for throwing a water. Hang on. There's an agenda. You'll have to wait. I want to bring up Heather and Peter for sneaking out last night and waking me up. Sorry, still ask us next. OK, um, I'm going to speak for Maddie as ombudsman. She saw Ryan taking £20 from her cupboard. You liar! Shh! Don't cross talk. Ryan, just tell us your side of the story. I didn't take nothing. You did. Peter. Ryan was skint last night. Today he was flashing a 20. Just check his pockets. He stuffed it in there. Look, only do it if you want to. I haven't got a money. Maddie says Ryan asked to borrow money last night and she told him her mum had given her £20. Why are you hiding behind her? Order! How do we know that Ryan took Maddie's money? Miss? I saw him coming out of our room last night. Ryan, it looks pretty obvious who did it. I found it outside. Oh. I found it outside. Yeah? It's kind of improbable that you find £20 lying around really randomly. I believe the new girl. Sam, stop cross-talking. If you want to say something, put your hand up. Yeah? You shouldn't go in and tell us to make take things. New kids always go a bit wild. I did. OK, then be fine. Shut up. I propose Ryan gets a strong warning. Stella? What about Maddie? She's lost 20 pounds. That's a lot. I propose that Ryan has fined 20 pounds. Yeah? It could be taken out of his pocket. Pocket money? Um, how about we say two pounds a week? OK. Any more hands? No? OK, I'm going to take the proposals. So there is two proposals against each other. All those in favour of a strong warning for Ryan. So all those in favour of Ryan being fined £20 and the money goes to Maddie. All against all. Ryan, it's been carried that you're fined £2 a week for the next 10 weeks. Next. Hang on, you can't live without the permission of the chair. Don't be fine for Ryan. I'm worried about that boy. We really must see some lessons, Myrtle. You were supposed to ask permission before leaving the meeting. Really, the impertinence. Okay, meeting closed. Hey, Mavi. Look at your sign up sheet. Thank you. Sure about these, Maddie. But you want to do any of the fun activities? That's old man Neil. He believed passionately that children have rights, that you're not owned by your teachers or your parents. This is what I want to do. Freedom's a big thing to deal with, Maddie, if you're not used to having it. to be made. I do. You crashed me off. Well, you, you stole the money. Hey, people. 
Rita, are you okay? Oh my gosh, are you okay? If you like. Thanks, but I've got lessons. Come on, Dad. Pick up the phone. Come on. Come on. It would be different this time. Instead, he sold the ass and it's disappeared. I'm sure there'll be a simple explanation. <laughs> Ryan, it's okay. It's all right to cry. <laughs> Who's gonna look after me now? We are. Oh, yeah. That's a lie, too because the kids are going to chuck me out the next meeting, and you know it. Oh, there you are. The classrooms are deserted. That's because they're all in there. Again. I can't observe if there's nothing to... observe. Come on, then. It's been passed that it can come in. This is a special meeting to sort out what happened to be Ryan? You were quite right about that boy, Myrtle. He needs supervision and structure. Thank you. It wasn't a fight. Peter never lifted a finger. Ryan just kept... kicking him. Len? I can't remember anything like this. Well, perhaps once. 
I propose Ryan sent home for a week. I don't think that's long enough. He's a pain. Send him home for the rest of the term. It, it is getting serious, but I say bullies list for three days is enough. If he has to stay here and live with people who are fed up with him, he'll get the point quicker. Yeah. Yes? He went downtown in his own two and house kids aren't allowed to do that. Yeah, he should be gated for that. But he doesn't know all the rules. He can read the rule book. Anybody else got anything to say? I know I got up people's noses when I started here. Yes, you were right, little toe rag. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't try to break anyone's nose. All right, I didn't hit anyone. But I nicked stuff. Broke whatever I could get my hands on. And that was just the first week. <laughs> Kids have issues and get angry. I was angry back then, and Ryan's angry now. He's got stuff going on in his life, and maybe he'll talk to someone about it. But he won't if we just chuck him out. I propose that Ryan gets a strong warning for hitting me, and is gated for a week for going out of school on his own. OK, we've got three proposals against each other. All those in favour of Ryan being sent home for a week? All those in favour of Ryan being suspended for a term? All those in favour of a strong warning for hitting Peter and a gating for a week for going downtown on his own. All against all? It's carried. Ryan, you've got a strong warning and you gate for a week, OK? Thanks, everybody. It's morning tea now, and then lessons start for the term. They're only cheering because they know they don't have to go. Today, we're going to write obituaries. What's them? Well, it's a... Uh... Obituary means a tribute to somebody who's recently died. Like a hero or someone brave or famous. Correct. I don't know any famous dead people. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about the real dead people. We're going to try and imagine the kind of life the person sitting next to us might live. Heather, can you start? What about Peter? the first boy to circumnavigate the globe in a bucket boat made in some hill workshop. Excellent start. Maddie? I'm sorry. I know you don't know these reprobates very well. So, how would you describe your life in, let's say, 70 years' time? Maddie? Just top of the head stuff. Don't worry about it too much, Mary. Just let your imagination play. Let it play with shining, fulfilled, happy lives. Visit the wildest recesses of your imagination and just say hello. <laughs> Maddie Harper, the famous navigator, died. Whoa, slow down, Peter. Died the moment after discovering a glittering island at the edge of the world. We don't contact parents unless it's a life-and-death emergency. And even then, not always. I turned it off while you were asleep. I've got to get back to London.
They're coming to get us. Here's a good place to trap the enemy. Here, have the catapult. What? Really? I can use this. You can't shoot at people. Just pretend. Oh! Ow! Ooh. Hello, children. We're not children. Hook's oh. been after Blackbeard for years. Oh. You're surrounded! Secure her! Oh. I surrender. Why should we spare you? Give us one good reason. If you let me go free, I promise never to set foot in Neverland again. Treasure! <laughs> <laughs> Here's my chance to capture Hook. Distract him with a wild shot. Stop! I found something! Now what? I don't know. It's improvisation, so we'll make it up as we go along. Rather sums up the place, I fear. Maddie, do you want to help write the next bit? How about... Oh, Mummy, oh, Daddy, you think I'm so sweet and so good. But inside, I'm evil. <laughs> can we say that? Of course we can. It's drama. It's make-believe. So, what happens next? Maddie? Okay. Perhaps you can ask your mum what she thinks. Maddie, you got an idea? Hi, Maddie. This is the seventh message I've left you. Please, when you get this, ring me straight away. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Cinderella who had a lot of issues with her parents. Mother, I don't have problem with Daddy anymore. I killed him last summer. <laughs> she was, in the olden days, for child counselling and happy time medication. Seething with inner rage. Basically, I'm really disturbed. Die, 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 oh. die, die! Rose. Rose. No. Look, if Maddie's turned off her mobile phone, then that's her business. No. No, I can't ask her to turn it back on. Well, that's not how we do things. Poor oh, little thing. I'm not sure there's much we can do to help it, I'm afraid. Why? What's wrong with him? I think it's the runt of the litter. The weakest and most helpless. The mother often abandons them and leaves them to die, I'm afraid. We should probably just leave it and let nature take its course. I'm not leaving him here to die. Shaking. It's probably cold as well as starving. Him. It's a boy. We've got to find him something to eat, Peter. Apparently, you can use droppers to feed wild baby rabbits. Normal milk's all right for now, but it might be better to get something called kitten replacement milk. Here. Thanks. Cheers, Mrs. Inspector.
That's perfect for dissection practice. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Try these droppers. Thanks. You hold him and I'll feed him. So, Ned, how do you know that the boiled sweet contains sucrose? Uh, because it didn't react with Benedict's solution. It would have if I boiled it with dilute hydrochloric acid and then neutralised it with sodium hydrogen carbonate. Do you know why it doesn't give a reaction? Uh, because the reactive bits on two glucose molecules have been joined together to make sucrose, and sucrose isn't a reducing sugar. The plant makes it like that so that it doesn't damage the proteins in its stone, like glucose itself would. I used to be a science teacher myself. He is super. Are you hoping for university? No, just some GCSEs for now. GCSEs? But he's working at A-level standard. Ned only started coming to lessons last year. That's impossible, surely. When children decide they want to learn, they go like rockets. Socks are like rabbits. Be a hundred more of them by morning. What do you think we should call him? Dinner? <laughs> Dinner. I, I like it. What will happen to him at the end of term? Well, it's yours. You can take him home. I'm sure your dad will come for you. Ryan, you're not the only person here with a less than perfect life. That's why we love Summerhill. It's like a real home. That thing dead yet? shut it down, can't they? If the government wanted to close Summerhill, they'd have done it years ago. Have I missed the meeting? You're for the high jump. Oh, no. I've heard from all the others. Of course, Roger. Um, sorry. Um, baby rabbits only require feeding once a day. Sorry. Um, right. Here we are. Observations. Are the children getting a proper education? It depends on what you mean by proper education. One that generally includes going to lessons. There's one 14-year-old who's attained A-level standards in the sciences. And judging by those photographs, he's not the only academic high flyer. Children who are inclined to learn are one thing. But what about the rest of them? They're allowed to fall behind. This is a failing school model. But what about the good things? I've written lots on citizenship 
anti-bullying, inclusiveness. Our job isn't to inspect children's democracies. But what about the way the community has dealt with Ryan? You know, that boy. They've embraced him. I don't pretend to understand Summerhill, and it's certainly not perfect, but there's something about this place. Magic? Oh, sorry. Not disturbing anything, am I? Not at all. Shall we step out for a moment? Who wants to come? Peter? I'm starting on the ship's mast. How about you, Maddie? All right. Yes. Come on. Cool. Look, Summer Hill is on the TBW list and has been for years. TBW? That explains all the inspections. We're pecking them to death. I need to present our findings to Mrs. Redhead. TBW. see that and you're climbing trees which I've banned you from doing it's dangerous why aren't you answering your phone hmm? and why aren't you in class I told you to go to lessons it's like the exam when I write my head seizes up like I'm being blown up from the inside just calm or won't that's not true mum please listen all right go and pack your things Maddie we're going home no! I love it here. I'm happy. Now! Do what get, I tell you! Get off me! <gasps> You must ensure that pupils are fully engaged in study across a broad and balanced curriculum. But we listen to what each of our children wants to learn about, and then we tailor-make our curriculum and timetables to suit them. I mean, the school fits the child. That's Summerhill. With respect, Mrs. Redhead, you don't really believe a child can be trusted to know what's best for them, surely? That's exactly what we believe. Children can't fulfill their true potential if they're not free to be themselves. How can children fulfill their potential if they don't attend lessons on a regular basis? Oh. This is what this is about, isn't it? Forcing children into classrooms. Don't even bother sending your children here. Uh, these are Her Majesty's inspectors. Well, lucky her. Do you know that the teachers tell the kids they needn't bother going to lessons? Maddie made the decision herself. She's 11! How does she know what's best for her? Because she's got a mind of her own. I am withdrawing my daughter with immediate effect. You must ensure adequate provision is made for pupils with dyslexia. So, to sum up, Summerhill has many shortcomings, but the root cause of these defects is non-attendance at lessons. And this is likely to adversely affect children's future prospects. That's just not true. It is our opinion. 
So, what happens next? I submit the report, then Ofsted decide what to do next. I think you can expect to see me again in a matter of days, Mrs. Redhead. safe now. Len! Len! Huh? Fire! Over there! It's the workshop, Ryan. Run to the office, quick as you can! He's in the workshop. Will! 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 I can see him, he's over there! Peter! Will! Everyone back! Will, no! Everyone, get all the buckets you can get your hands on and fill them up in the pool! Peter! Peter! It's gonna be okay. How did it start? We don't know. Ryan raised the alarm. I bet some little hooligan started this deliberately. Well, somebody must have seen something. Hmm? I saw Ryan. He did it. Maddie? Are you certain? Peter's inside. What? Will's gone in after him. Will! Can you hear me? Will! <laughs> who's in there? It's Will and Peter, who's 11. Two inside! We think it was Ryan. I didn't do it. Maddie's a witness. Arson. Suspect identified. We can't leave until the morning. We have to give the police a witness statement, Maddie. I don't want to. I know, darling. I'll get you home as soon as I can. It's just that you're the only one who saw Ryan start the fire. I think the police are trying to contact his parents now. His mum works abroad. Well, she'd better hurry up and get back, because that boy's in big trouble. Jed, I don't want you to come. I'm taking over now. You've done enough damage.
I understand you have no contact details for either of Ryan Gota's parents. Ryan's father will be in touch. Well, until he does, Child Protection Services has a duty to look after him. But he's the school's responsibility during term time. So you're happy to take responsibility for Ryan if he did start a fire? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we've never had this sort of thing before. Oh, come on. This is the do-as-you-like school for difficult children, isn't it? This is a democratic school for all kids. Right, the community will listen to what Ryan's got to say in the meeting and then we'll make a decision on what to do for the best. I don't think you understand. If Ryan is charged with deliberately starting a fire, I will be removing him from school today. A bunch of kids chatting about it won't save the day. Do you know what? It often does. Sorry? You'd be amazed what happens when you trust in kids and their instincts. Sally, yeah? Instead of believing everything you've read about us, why don't you come to the meeting? I'll discuss your request with Sergeant Mills. Sorry. I didn't do it. Hey. Trust them. Quiet! This is another special meeting. We've got to talk about the fire. First, we need to vote in a few people. Hang on. Where's Maddie? I'll go find her. I'd like to propose her mother comes in as well. All those in favour of Maddie's mother attending? Against? That's carried. Mrs. Roberts and Sergeant Mills would like to come in. All in favor that they can come in? Against? That's also carried. You've been invited into the school meeting. We'd very much appreciate it if Maddie could tell us what happened. No, there isn't time. We're just waiting for the police to interview and then we're leaving. Ryan and Sissy didn't do it. And that Maddie isn't telling the truth. What? Maddie? Will you get those things out your ears? Let's put everybody straight. Hugely serious. Ryan could have killed Will and Peter. Mary, let me chair this. Sorry, Sam. Ryan's in big trouble, and he says he didn't start the fire. Maddie says she saw him. Could you tell the meeting what you saw, Maddie? Go on. Um, I finished making my fob for the sign-out board, and I was just hanging around, and I saw Ryan um, pouring the tin of varnish on the campfire. She's lying, Peter. It wasn't me. I'd never do anything like that. Is this because of the money? What money? What's he talking about? I'm sorry, but visitors aren't allowed to talk in meetings. Really? The meeting found Ryan for stealing 20 pounds from Maddie. It's another thing you didn't tell me about. I don't know if the community can cope with Ryan. I agree. It's not just Peter's boat that got banged. What about the workshop? I propose we send Ryan home for good. Hold on. Before we string him up, let's give Ryan a chance to say something. I never did it. I wasn't even there. I was sorting out my rabbit hutch near Len's caravan. I was listening to those inspectors going on about the school or something. on the TBW list and has been for years. And I seen the flames. So I ran and I knocked Len. on Len's door. Len! I see it. Honest. OK, I admit it. I stole the money, all right? I'm sorry. I nicked stuff. But I don't start fires. You've got to believe me. I didn't do it. Okay, Ryan's saying one thing and Maddie's saying another. I don't know who to believe now. I believe Maddie. Ryan's always in trouble. I think he should go home for the rest of her term. But we don't definitely know he did it, Min. There's no evidence. We don't know if Ryan started the fire or not. But if he did, he's in serious trouble anyway. Well, if the fire's deliberate, yes. I mean, Summerhill's subject to the laws of the land like everywhere else, and after this meeting, the police take over. If the police decide Ryan did it, what will happen to him? 
He'll become a looked-after child. But Matt already looks after him. No, Lucy, it means that he'll be taken away from here. See that lady over there? She's a social worker. She'll take him into care. But why can't he just go home? What about his mum and dad? Ryan's mum's not around at the moment. We're not sure where his dad is. Maddie? I lied. It was me. What are you talking about? Sit down. No, Mum. Let me talk. I wanted to burn my fob on the campfire, but it wasn't catching, so I threw the tin of varnish on. I never meant to burn the workshop down. She's not herself. She's had a shock. No, Mum. I have to say something. Before I came here, I was really badly stressed and I still can't deal with writing and tests and stuff. But this place is just so cool and I got my head around just going to the lessons I wanted to go to. I was feeling good about myself for the, for the first time in ages. Until you turned up. Maddie. That's why I wanted to burn my fob because I knew I wouldn't need it anymore. Mum told me she was taking me away from Summerhill and I just lost it. I just lost it completely. Because I'm desperate to stay. I'm sorry I lied. And Peter, I'm sorry about your arm. And your boat. <laughs> very brave of you, Maddie. That was very brave, Maddie. But it doesn't bring back Peter's boat. And Maddie did try to pin the blame on Ryan. We need to find you, Maddie. There's no point, lest we know that Maddie's mum's gonna let us stay. Police aren't taking it any further. What about Ryan? Well, they're still not sure what will happen at the end of term and if his father doesn't turn up, but Ryan can stay for now. You ready to go? I want to stay. No, you're coming home with me. They want to give me a chance, Mum. Unlike you. Maddie, I give you lots of chances. I work so hard to give you a good life. And I've got one. Here. You and Dad sent me to Summerhill. Good decision. Now let me stay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I can do that. They're going to give me a fine. Let me work it out. I've got to make it up to them. I want to do the right thing, Mum. Maddie, I can't... I, I can't... Just until the end of term, then. Mum, please. I'm not sure. You're not sure. But I'm sure. Let me decide something for myself. Even if it's just this once. Then I'll never ask you for anything ever again, and I'll do everything you say. I promise. Cross my heart. Mum? All right, Maddie. You can stay. Only till the end of term, yes? Thanks, Mum. This means so much to me. Just look after yourself. I will. You too, Mum. And tell Dad I miss him. Maddie? I said sorry. You lost something. <laughs> if 
you accept our recommendations, then you'll have as long as you need. And if we don't accept them? Six months. Six months? That's the point at which we'd start proceedings to close the school. Do you need me to explain any of it? No, I know exactly what a notice of complaint means. Do as you say or you'll close us down. Summerhill must ensure pupils are fully engaged in study throughout their time in the school, which is inspector speak for compulsory lessons. It doesn't say that. No, but it's implied. You can't make children learn. We have to ensure all children receive a broad and balanced education. No, you have to ensure they're instructed. Stuff from the neck up, Dad used to call it. I'm not here to pass judgment on your father and his educational views. Because you're scared of them. Because you know Dad had a point. And if Dad did have a point, then your view of looking at children's education is too narrow. I'm only doing my job. And I'm only doing mine! I'm just trying to give my children a Summerhill education. But what exactly is that? Summerhill. Summerhill teaches children how to manage themselves, to manage their minds, their bodies, their relationships, their emotions. We give them an owner's manual for life. I'm sorry, but we just can't measure that. <laughs> Is this what you wanted to do when you were a child? I know, neither do I. That's why we've got Mark here. Uh, hello, I'm Mark. I'm a solicitor, a specialist in human rights. Zoe's so asked me to come down and talk to you. Why? We could take the government to court. Uh, that's madness, isn't it, Mark? Is it? It would be a fairer fight. A judge would have to decide if the inspectors are right and the school is rubbish, or if you're right and the school is just different. Well, how can we afford to go to court? We can't even afford a decent school bus. You would need to raise at least £100,000 to prepare the case. £100,000? Is that how much you cost? Uh, no, no, but uh, uh, we need a good barrister to, uh, to fight for us in court, and they cost a lot of money. We'll just have to raise the money. I if that's the only way Summerhill can stay open. Well, we... Could negotiate, you know, with the government, couldn't we? No. We've got to stay true to who we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Maddie. I think the inspectors are just bullies. And we have to do what you do with bullies. Stand up to them. Yeah. What do you think, Zoe? Well, Dad would want us to stand up for what we believe in. Shall we take a vote? All those in favour of taking the government to court? Yes. 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 Against? It's carried. Summerhill's going to stand up to the inspectors. I know how we can raise some money. We can write letters to people who used to go to Summerhill who now lead brilliant lives. That's a great idea. And get them to tell you what they think of the school. We can use their testimonies in court. We've got an idea. Unpack bags at the supermarket. Smashing. No, the eggs have to go on top. I can always spot a winner. You'd better be right. <laughs> I've got to raise a huge amount of money. I hope you're not offering us false hope. 
What's the alternative, Sevi? Footnote in the history books? Destroyers, our way of life will be gone forever. We need your help to keep Summerhill open so we can stay here. And other kids can come here in the future. We need a fearsome army. And that costs money. Please, can you send us a contribution? No matter how small. Thank you. Got enough to mount a proper legal challenge. We've done it! In very early. We've got lots to prepare. Nice to see you again, Alice. Drummed up a good case for the inspectors? Oh, absolutely. The government has better pack it on this case. You've still got time to throw the towel in, Mark. A few hours till we get on the way. The children would have to vote. Oh, yes. The famous children's democracy. But do they actually learn anything, huh? So, go on. Spill. Who am I up against? Huh? Oh, um... You'll see. Oh, no, Mark. Oh, don't tell me you've got to represent them yourself. Um... Well? You got no money. Kind of. You poor thing. Oh, well. I'll see you in court. Bye. So do I, Maddie. Good luck. This place is everything to me. You go and win for us.
Hill, the controversial school founded by A.S. Neal, takes its fight to the High Court today. The school, where pupils can spend all day playing, has been slammed by education chiefs as giving children such a poor education it should close. This bit's reserved for ex-summer aliens. I'm Phil. Jed, our, our daughter Maddie goes there. Maddie Harper? Mm. She persuaded me out of a week's takings for the campaign. <laughs> She's a great girl. You must be really proud of her. We are. school and no barrister. Both of them got scared and ran away. <laughs> oh dear. Judge is an absolute stickler. Five, four, three, two, one. All rise. Where is Summerhill? Bye bye, Summerhill. I'm sorry, I think we ought to make a start. But, Your Honour... With or without, Mrs Redhead. Not a particularly auspicious start, Mr Stevens. Miss James, perhaps you'd like to begin. The Secretary of State for Education versus Summerhill. It will take at least an hour before the breakdown service gets here. We haven't got an hour. It's our school they're trying to close and we have to be there. I might be able to help. Why? That's a mechanic. Will. Let him have a look. Well, can you fix it? Secretary of State for Education, the Office of Standards in Education, and Her Majesty's Inspectorate. <laughs> and that is the introductions finished, Your Honour. Or should I say as many as I'm able to do. Personally, I think it an enormous waste of time and money to bring a case to court and then fail to show up. Oh, my... I'm not sure, Your Honour. Who's she? A barrister. She's got to prove the inspectors are right about the school. Yes, but who is she? I know who she is. She's the enemy. She's Hook. Captain Hook. Who 
Who's that? That is Geoffrey Robertson. Only one of the best QCs money can buy. How'd the school afford him? He wrote 2,501 letters, met 25 ex-pupils, and shook 49 buckets. Peter Pan! And appearing for Summerhill School is Mr. Geoffrey Robertson, QC. So is Tiger Lily, waiting to be saved. I'd like to open your honour by saying that the Secretary of State has absolutely no problem with Summerhill and its philosophies. Oh, good! We can all go home. He's naughty. Mm. Mr. Robertson, please let Miss James finish. Or at least start. Thank you, Your Honour. The Secretary of State is fully aware of the huge influence that A.S. Neal and his school have had upon the world of education. The government is concerned only with the children and how well they are being taught. Now, in the case of Summer Hill, this is very inefficiently indeed. The root of the problem is non-attendance at lessons. Now, this is because Summer Hill does not adhere to the national curriculum. Oh, no. They have their own. The cop-out curriculum. Cop-out curriculum? Like it. Over the years, the school have taken their founder's philosophy of freedom and used it as an excuse to be idle. The futures of pupils at Summer Hill are blighted because Summer Hill is failing. And that is what we will prove to the court. When is Peter Pan going to do something? They take it in turns. Now it's our turn to say why the inspectors are wrong. I wonder if there's anyone in the Department of Education who's ever actually been a child. Perhaps you were all born fully formed miniature adults, eh? Complete with clipboards. <laughs> Mr. Robertson, your statement. Luckily for us, A.S. Neal understood children. Indeed, he understood them so well, he changed the way people thought about education forever. That, objection, Your Honour. Neil didn't believe in forcing children to sit in classrooms they didn't want to be in, taking exams just for the sake of it. No. He wanted them to grow up with a sense of emotional well-being. Oh, yes. He gave them a voice. A voice that's still being heard today. Every single school council, the whole world over, has its origins in this room and this man. And the first children's democracy. A democracy that's still going strong 79 years later. Your Honor, if Summerhill is failing, how is it that last year 75.3% of pupils achieved GCSE at grades A to C? <laughs> A figure which I think I'm correcting saying is higher than the national average. What becomes of this lot, eh? These poor Summerhill children. Do they grow up miserable, unqualified, unemployed, turning to drink and drugs and crime and cursing the fates that ever sent them to Summerhill? No, sir. They do not. If you please, alumni of Summerhill. Actress, artist, doctor, horticulturalist, marine engineer, research chemist, professor of mathematics, nurse, charity director, dancer. Indeed, the only significant occupations not represented, and this may come as a great credit to the school, are politicians and schools inspectors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we do not seek to suggest that Summerhill suits everyone, but it does suit the great majority of children who go there. Surely, in any intelligent education system, Summerhill would be regarded as a... Uh, well, let's say, a unique educational establishment. Sadly, Ofsted has not been intelligent. And to conclude, Your Honor, I'd like to suggest that it is not Summerhill that is failing. It's Ofsted itself. Hook's planning something. Look. It's me.
swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Inspector Wharton, would you say that the teachers at Summerhill are failing in their educational responsibility? I wouldn't use the word failing, no. But children with special needs are, as a matter of principle, being overlooked? Yes, one boy with dyslexia was clearly struggling with his reading and writing. His teacher merely typed his work for him. Luke's talking about me. Dyslexic children need specialist intervention, Your Honor. That's exactly what they get when we make sure that Peter feels successful in front of his classmates and Len works with him on his reading and writing one to one. So the children are allowed to drift and fall behind. In fact, these children are rather discouraged from attending lessons. Is that your view? She's plain dirty. She's twisting everything to suit her argument. That's her job. Well, with attitudes like these, is it any wonder that the children do as they please? Was there not an instance where one boy attacked another boy? An incident where not one single member of staff intervened? I didn't need to. The children sorted it out. Sorry, please. How many more incidents like this happen every day, Your Honour? I object. Go on, Miss James. I ask you, is this freedom? or an abrogation of responsibility on the part of the teaching staff at Summer Hill. And then, of course, there is the matter of the fire. Fire? Why wasn't I told about this? You knew the fire was an accident! Please, Carl, just shut down. <laughs> Order, please. So we please, this is but how can I sit here? Presumably, Mr. Wharton, the events you personally witnessed must have added to your concerns about the school. Yes, but Summerhill was TBW anyway. TBW. TBW. I've heard it somewhere before. It's Ofsted speak. It just means the school was giving us cause for concern. Your Honor, may I suggest a break? Uh, we will resume at two o'clock prompt. The fire was an accident. That stupid fight. I can read much better now. Hello, right, Peter. Did the rabbit make it? Yeah. You should see him now. He's huge. I'm so pleased. Look, Summerhill is on the TBW list and has been for years. Where are you going? They'll be going back in. I need to tell the pan man something about me. Tactical advantage. I'm coming with you. Me too. You are rather trying my patience, Mr. Robertson. Oh, apologies, Your Honour. Some uh, rather important evidence has come to hand. TBW. I'm sorry? TBW? Mr. Wharton, would you be kind enough to enlighten us as to what TBW stands for? You mentioned earlier, but Summerhill was TBW anyway. Well, what does it mean? To be watched. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Could you speak up? To be watched. To be watched. To be watched. What are you chasing? Mr. Wharton, did you at any point say to Summerhill the reason we've been inspecting you a lot is because we're worried about the philosophy that pupils are not forced to go to lessons? Because that's the reality, is it not? The reality is routine inspections were made because we were worried that the school was not providing... Uh, efficient and suitable instruction, that old chestnut, yes. Um, you mentioned the word routine, but what was happening at Summerhill wasn't the slightest bit routine, was it? Because Summerhill was on a government hit list. Ofsted had the school in its sights for the best part of a decade, and this year, you decided to go for the jugular and shut it down. I object, Your Honor. This is conjecture. Robertson, please. The school was to be watched. It was on a hit list and had been for nine years. Mr. Wharton, why was the school not told about this? I'm not sure. You're not sure. 
Well, happily, I am sure. The answer is because it was a secret. A secret. Watch out! Reference, Your Honor, is page 233. Summerhill to remain TBW. An internal Ofsted letter dated 1993. Yeah. Oh, God. All of which means, Your Honor, that Summerhill was on a hit list way before 1993. Your Honor, it wasn't a hit list. Then, fed up when their endless year-in, year-out inspections weren't having the desired effect. Pure conjecture. Ofsted sent in a team of eight. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one inspector for every seven pupils in the school to close it down. Watch me. <laughs> ah! Hi! Ah! Surely the school had a fundamental right to know why they were being subjected to this level of surveillance? I agree, it would have been desirable. Mr. Wharton, be honest. Ofsted wanted to close Summerhill down. You decided on a game of sudden death, ah. didn't you? I'm not sure I follow. By forcing Summerhill to do something you knew they would never agree to, making lessons compulsory, you thought you could strike it from the register of schools. I submit, Your Honor, if I may be so bold, that this is what you had in mind from the moment you set foot in the school. This was the game in hand. My learned friend is making all this up. Am I? Who's making what up? Jeffrey. The Secretary of State has decided he'd like to take the pressure off Summerhill just a little. <laughs> Feel like surrendering? <laughs> You're giving up before I cut your head off. Miss James. The Secretary of State has offered Mrs. Redhead an out-of-court agreement. This has been accepted. Mrs. Redhead can't make that decision for the school. The community has to decide whether to accept or to continue with the case. They need to hold a school meeting in here, if that's accepted. With respect, Your Honor, I... Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. Your chair this week. And your secretary. So what do we do now? I hope to let them stay. Uh, excuse me, sir. <clears throat> but visitors aren't allowed in our meetings. We have to vote on whether we let them, you, stay. Of course. Please. Stella. One case for the special meeting today. But first, I propose we let the visitors stay to see how we do things. 
All those for the proposal? All those against? Then it's carried. You're all invited to stay. Thanks. Zoe, what does the agreement say? The Secretary of State recognises that this independent school, based as it is on the writings and systems of A.S. Neil, has a right to its own philosophy. Now, this is really important because what it's saying is that we don't have to do things the government's way. But will the inspectors keep on coming? Ofsted are going to have to take us off the to-be-watched list, but then they'll do the inspections normally. But when they do come, which will probably be in about four years' time, they're going to have to bring an expert in our kind of education. Ryan? If we agree, can we still sign up for lessons? And not be forced to go to everything? The freedom of the children to attend classroom lessons or not in accordance with Neil's philosophy is acknowledged. Yes! Hey! Order! This is a meeting. Ten pence fine, Will. So, the two proposals are accept the agreement or let Zoe, our expert witness, and the old pupils prove what a great school we really are and defeat the government properly. And maybe lose. That's it, Stella. You got it. Lucy? Zoe, what do you think? I don't know, Lucy. I really don't know. I mean, I think I'll feel cheated if I don't get the chance to stand up and defend the school against all the lies. Let's fight to the death. Hear, hear. A peace agreement is sometimes the best outcome, if it ends a war. Uh, this agreement would make Summerhill the most protected school in the world. It's a charter for freedom. Any more questions? Remarkable. All those for accepting the government's agreement. All those against? Then it's carried. We accept the government's agreement. Thank you, sir and madam, for allowing us the privilege of having a school meeting in your courtroom. Not at all. It's been our honour be allowed to attend your meeting. I trust you also appreciate the privilege you've been given. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your Honour, I think it really is for you to bring proceedings to a close. Uh, this tribunal formally annuls the notice of complaint against Summerhill School. Children from Summerhill describe it as the happiest school in the world. And judging from the scenes here today, they might well be right. Um, we have said all along that we're not trying to close Summerhill. Thank you. to take me home, haven't you? Maddie, my problem with Summerhill... Oh, Mum, you can't. Maddie, my problem with Summerhill is more to do with me than anything else. I like everything neat and organised. I like lists and targets. I'm a control freak. Let's face it, it's like having an inspector in the family. Summerhill is... Golden, rumpled, cheerful, laid back. It's nothing like me. No wonder you love it so much. No. No, it's okay. I, I, I know who I am. 
But you don't know who you are yet. So go back to Summer Hill and find out. I do love you, Maddie. I just don't find it very easy to show it. Oh, Mum, you just have. find my dad. The social worker's coming for me tomorrow. But what about next term? I'll be in school near to where my care is. I don't want you to go. I don't either, Maddie. new science teacher oh. and I think you're going to approve <laughs> Myrtle. Myrtle's taken over from Emma. Oh that's terrific. <laughs> I'm planning to stay here until I can no longer tell my permanganate from my plutonium. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> Come on. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Aren't you launching the boat? Just been feeding dinner. Ryan, there's someone to see you. All right. Dad! Dad, where have you been? I lost my job at the garage. An opportunity came up in Dubai. God, you should see that place. You should have rung. But you said it'd be better if I left Ryan with you for the term. Well, I think you took it rather literally. What about the house? You sold it. I had to, Ryan. It's all part of the plan. What stupid plan was that? Do you like it here, Ryan? I love it. Ryan's fees. I'm sorry they're late. I think you've made a mistake. And the office said if I wanted to pay five years in advance, that's the cost. Five years? You mean I can stay here till I'm 16? Well, that's if they'll have you. Has he been any trouble? None at all. That's all right, isn't it, son? Yeah, Dad. It's all right. Now, where's that Barbie? I'm so hungry I could eat a horse stuffed between two pea-soaked mattresses. <laughs> Okay, let's go. 